Fear and its expansion, Extraction Point, are two must-play first-person shooters. However, I never mention Perseus' mandate. When they ask about it, I tell them they can just skip it. To me, canonically, Fear just ends with Extraction Point. Why is that? Hey everyone, as always Jarek here, and in today's video we are going to ask, how bad is Perseus' mandate really? But first, we need to thank our sponsor. Today's sponsor is Hunting Clash. It is a free-to-play game that is available on both iOS and Android, so be sure to check that link down below in the video information. Hunting Clash is, you guessed it, a hunting game with hunting grounds across the entire world. Hunting Clash gives you a wide choice of weapons, ranging from a sniper rifle to a bow. It also gives you plenty of gear, like sonars and buffs. There are over 100 different animals to hunt from all over the world. For example, you can hunt American bison in Montana. You can hunt warthogs, leopards, and rhinos in Namibia. You can hunt the Indian wild boar in Burma. You can hunt a cougar in Yukon. You can also do some bow hunting for a Eurasian lynx or raccoon dogs. You can hunt some fennec foxes in the Valley of Kings. I don't think I need to point out this is a video game. Please don't try any of this in real life, I do not support that. But you get the point, all of these different locations give you lots of variety. There's even PvP through duels and championships. You match up with another person and then you have a time limit to better their score. If you want a little bit of an extra challenge, this may be the way to go for you. This also gives you a bunch of rewards. And if you think you'll still get bored, there are events every single week. So if you want to try out Hunting Clash, it is again free to play and it's available on both iOS and Android. Check that link down below in the video information downloading it will really help this channel, and also a huge thanks goes to Hunting Clash for supporting this video. The original Fear was the best looking game of 2005. It was the game you used to benchmark your rig until 2007 when Crisis came out. Extraction Point added on top of this, making it look even better. So then what happened here? Perseus Mandate looks considerably worse than both the original game and Extraction Point which is odd because Timegate Studios made Extraction Point and Perseus Mandate. So again, what happened? It's not subtle either. You can tell right away there is no lighting in the very first map you see. Hell, some of these structures don't even look complete. All the visual effects and the rest of the game is here, but just the maps themselves look really poor. It doesn't help that these map designs are severely lacking. I used to play a lot of Fear Combat back in the day. My old viewers know how much I played that game. I was the top player in the game, won a few tournaments for it. I really liked the multiplayer of the original Fear. And I'm not kidding when I say these maps look worse than some of the mod maps that I downloaded to play on Fear Combat. Fear Combat being the name of the multiplayer, if you didn't figure that out. To make things even more confusing, occasionally the maps would just suddenly look better. But the reason for this is because they're maps from Extraction Point that you go through in a different direction. Now, I'm not a developer, so I can't tell you the reason why the game looks so much worse. All I know is it has something to do with the lighting. I'm sure someone will give me more information about what they could have done differently to make the maps look better, but it seems corners were cut pretty severely. What really didn't help Perseus Mandate was when it released. The original Fear came out as a PC exclusive in 2005. Like I said, it was the best looking game in 2005 and people used it to benchmark their rigs. Extraction Point came out a year later in 2006 and looked better than the original Fear, if so just slightly. Yes, the 360 had come out in 2006, but we weren't quite solidly next gen yet. By the time Perseus Mandate came out, we were. Perseus Mandate came out in 2007, this is the same year that Call of Duty 4, Halo 3, Crisis, and many other timeless games released. Now, the original Fear does stand the test of time, but that's mostly due to its aesthetic design and its lighting. No one would say that Fear looks better than Crisis or Call of Duty 4 graphically. Fear was outdated, and releasing an expansion that cut corners and looked worse than the base game two years later once we're solidly next gen is something that's not going to go well. To make matters worse, Perseus Mandate is a very buggy game. This expansion will randomly disconnect you from servers, even though it's a single player only game, and crash pretty frequently. Now, this would only happen at the end of a loading sequence, and when this did happen, you'd have to lower your textures all the way down to minimum, then it would load, then I quick saved and changed my textures, and then I could play like normal. Still though, that's not a time when the game is done loading, so typically you're gonna have to replay a few combat encounters if this happened, or be paranoid and quick save about every five feet, just in case you run into another loading zone. Now, to be fair, this happens at Extraction Point as well, but it happens way more often in Perseus Mandate. Irrelevant note that name is just such gibberish. First Encounter Assault Recon Perseus Mandate. 
They just shoved every word possible into the title. At least Extraction Point made sense and was to the point you were going to the Extraction Point. Speaking of, Extraction Point firmly ended the story, so where do you go from there? Well, Timegate said, F*** it, play someone else. You play as another unnamed faceless fear soldier that can also have slow motion powers for reasons. It makes sense that Point Man has slow motion powers because he's part of the original experiment, but it's never explained why this guy does. He just does. Anyway, you spend most of this game with your two generic soldier teammates, Chen and Steve Bloom. Time to fly. Because everyone's voiced by Steve Bloom. I genuinely don't remember the name of that character, he's just Steve Bloom in my head. And that's one of the biggest problems with picking Steve Bloom as a voice actor. He's so recognizable as Steve Bloom and not the character he's supposed to be voicing as. Granted, it doesn't help that the writing in this game does absolutely nothing to make these characters stick out. Now, yes, they did a similar thing in Extraction Point, but Holiday and Jin are much better characters. You already knew who they were from the base game, but the writing was expanded in Extraction Point. You even spend a significant amount of time fighting alongside Holiday. Make a pretty good team out here. Either he's saving you by shooting at enemies from above, or you're saving him by sniping at enemies down below. You spend enough time to get an attachment for this character, and it also helps that the voice actor is the same voice actor that did Sergeant Johnson in Halo. Point being, you are going to like those characters. So when Holiday eventually does die, it means something to you. Chen and Steve Blue mean absolutely nothing to me, and the only reason I even remember Chen's name is because he's the token character that exists to die in a fear paranormal way. Which is fine, that's very fear-like, but it's not as memorable as Holidays, nor is it pulled off anywhere near as well. It also is a lot more predictable, you're waiting the whole game for him to eventually die. Jeez, I haven't even talked about the story yet, I've just been sitting here complaining about the characters, and that should tell you a lot. Perseus Mandate takes place during the events of the original Fear and Extraction Point. It starts right after Aldous Bishop gets murdered by ATC. But it also interestingly, like I said, takes place across Fear and Extraction Point, so for a little bit of a moment during the game, the replicas shut down and then come back. You also get to see that giant nuke of an explosion that happened at the end of the first game, which, like I said before, this is always cool to see from a different perspective. Anyway, the goal of your team is to infiltrate a second ATC data center and find out what they're doing. Once you're there, you'll encounter a new faction, the Nightcrawlers. Oh boy, am I going to talk about them a lot when I talk about the gameplay. Keep that in your mind, I'm going to do a lot of complaining about them. The Nightcrawlers are mercenaries that have been hired to cover up ATC's mess and to secure Alma's DNA. More or less, the whole story can be boiled down to you need to stop the Nightcrawlers, take that DNA, and then leave. That's it. That's, that's literally the whole story. The gameplay of Perseus Mandate is up and down, but mostly down. What I remember are the frustrating new enemies that I did not enjoy at all. So I guess let's talk about them first. Let's talk about the Nightcrawlers. The Nightcrawlers as an enemy are just reskinned bullet spongy replicas with different generic voice acting that all sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger clones. Making an enemy bullet spongy does not make it more fun to fight. We've already fought these before, except for we've done this better. On top of that, they somehow have less personality than a literal army of clones. They also carry one of the three new guns added to Perseus Mandate, and this one is rather boring. It's just a better version of the G2A2. It's stronger, it's more accurate, it has less recoil, you have no reason to use the G2A2 anymore. I mean, really, I have nothing more to say about this gun other than I think the G2A2 looks cooler. Even if the G2A2 is just an SL8 with a small C-Mag. But we're not done with the Nightcrawlers yet, because the base Nightcrawlers, while being slightly more bullet spongy, are just... meh. They're not frustrating, they're just... Lame and not as good as replica soldiers. What is frustrating and annoying are the elite Nightcrawlers. When I think of Perseus Mandate, these f***ers are the first thing that comes to my mind. I've played Fear so many times that anytime I play through Fear and Extraction Point, I play on extreme difficulty. It's just too easy for me otherwise, especially because slow motion is kind of busted. But I don't do that when I'm playing Perseus Mandate, 
because the whole game is full of artificial difficulty. And these elite nightcrawlers are a perfect example of why. The original replicas do just as much damage to you as you do to them. Anytime in the original Fear something came by that had more health, it was very obvious. They had a bunch of armor and they were slow something like the tanks or the mechs. They always had a twist that made the challenge not feel like it was artificial. With the Elite Nightcrawlers, they just have a f ton of health for absolutely no reason, they're not wearing extra armor, and they're still fast, and they have a wall jump ability that throws five grenades that will kill you instantly. They can also canonically slow down time, because sure, why doesn't everyone get slow-mo powers? These are, without a doubt, the worst enemy in the entire Fear franchise. I have no clue what they were thinking. They also have the true hallmark of bullet spongy enemies where they just don't flip and keep shooting at you through your own bullets. Damn, do I hate these enemies. And the last boss is just an elite nightcrawler, but with even more health. Why? Who thought this would be a good idea? The arena isn't even a good arena. It's just a square with a bunch of boxes in it. And if they really want to make the difficulty unfair, they'll give the enemies one of the other two new weapons. As I mentioned, the first new weapon they added was that assault rifle that replaces the G2A2. The second new weapon they added is a grenade launcher that really sucks. You are very likely to do damage to yourself with this grenade launcher because the grenades bounce all over the place. Imagine a grenade launcher that fires the Doom 3 grenades and that's basically what this thing is. The original fear grenades are easy to control because they blow up when they hit something, but also they're round and it's easy to tell where they're going to bounce. These are just like bouncing beans, they just keep going. On top of that, they bounce oddly because they're not round. They could have made this thing so much better if they made the grenades blow up on contact with anything, not just enemies. The next weapon is quite a bit better, the Tesla weapon. It's incredibly easy to use, it will kill most enemies in one or two shots, and if two enemies are standing near each other, they'll both get hit. And you really have to try to miss enemies. This thing is going to lock onto enemies when you're not aiming anywhere near them, which is kind of annoying because it makes it difficult to pinpoint enemies you actually want to shoot at, but since they normally all get hit at once, it's not too big of a deal. But the biggest problem with these weapons is that they are way more annoying for the enemies to have than they are fun for you to have. If one of the enemies has this grenade launcher, you're going to have grenades bouncing all around you. If one of the enemies has the Tesla weapon, it is hit scan and will deal 50 damage to you the moment you turn the corner. You cannot avoid damage. You now see why I don't play Percy's Mandate on extreme difficulty. The difficulty doesn't feel genuine, it feels artificial and cheap. It also doesn't feel rewarding and satisfying like the first game in its expansion was. Fear's AI also doesn't know how to deal with two entities being near it at once. Anyone that's played Extraction Point may have seen this with all the turrets you can throw down. It can royally break replica assassins. It also can break the turrets because they'll just kind of ignore you and try to shoot at your mini turrets. Well, Perseus Mandate puts its AI into these situations a lot and it royally breaks them. I mean, look at this. It's not rare and it's not limited to just the assassins and shades. One level involves a massive shootout between replica soldiers and Delta Force. There are way too many entities on this map for the AI to know what to do. Also, this whole map and situation just looks like a low quality mod. This looks really amateurish and it's an official expansion. Hell, they even reused the multiplayer callouts you would hear from your teammates and this seems really cheap. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I did not realize I was a teammate. What the hell was he doing there? With that said, Perseus Mandate did have a few moments. One of the standout set pieces in this game saw you running away from a mech, Kool-Aid manning his way through walls as you tried to get away. This is a great cat and mouse moment. You don't have the weapons to deal with it nor the space, so you have to keep running until you eventually find the weapons you need to take it on. It feels dynamic, and every time you play it, it's going to play out in a different way. Extraction Point did a fantastic job using the shades to provide horror that was far better than the base game. These shades I understood as apparitions of Alma, but she didn't have control over them, so they were actually terrifying. Percy's Mandate used these as well. For a while, you're stuck underground with Chen, leading to his death. And while this wasn't as good as Extraction Point, because we've already seen the same thing happen, but better, the whole set piece was generally of higher quality than the rest of Perseus' mandate, but also the fights you have with the shades right after are still pretty good. Hell, I'd say more than good. I'd say they're actually an evolution of how they use them in Extraction Point. Extraction Point introduced the shades. They introduced these glowing eye enemies. They work just like the replica assassins, but they're a little bit more terrifying because look at them. What the f- Ah! Oh! <laughs> Alright, listen. Those things are scary as- <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the f***ing automatic door scared you!
It sounded like those things. However, they have the same sort of downside that you can just jump kick them once and they die. Well, there's a few arenas in Perseus Mandate where you're having to fight against these shades in water. This does a few things. One, the reflections of the water make it difficult to actually see where the shades are. And two, when you're fighting in the original fear, you cannot jump kick if you're standing in water. This only half fixes that problem though, because you can still slide kick, but still. In general, this is the one time where I can say they actually evolved past what Extraction Point did. Every other time was worse. Surprisingly, the character Steve Bloom voice didn't end up dying in this expansion, but that's probably because they had to pay for Steve Bloom. I wonder how much Steve Bloom cost. It can't be that expensive. He's in like every game imaginable. Anyway, this game's a bit of a slog. It's roughly five hours long, around the same length as Extraction Point, and while Extraction Point never felt like I was fighting for hours and hours just waiting for the game to end, I started feeling that way about Perseus Mandate within the first hour. The environments range from a city that looks like an uncompleted mod, to the typical fear industrial setting, to a concrete research lab, to rock tunnels that truly look hideous. I have seriously seen a modded map of Battle Creek that looks way better than this. Every one of these sections feel like they drag on for far too long, as if they didn't have enough time to test it and see what they needed to cut out. I know I just praised the shades a bit of a while ago, but I also said it was of higher quality than the rest of Perseus Mandate, and that's true for the horror, because for the most part, it's kind of laughable. What the f <laughs> They're getting Gary's modded. <laughs> what a way to die. The horror in Perseus Mandate is very cliche, and it relies on screamers a lot. Fear's horror is at its best when it's psychological. Jump scares are not psychological. It's like that asshole friend that screams in your ear and says, ha ha, got you, isn't that funny, you were so scared. No, I wasn't, you screamed in my ear. What is curious is that it seems Perseus Mandate remembers that it's fear a few times and does have a few good horror sections. Well, mainly one. You walk through a door, the doorway disappears behind you. You walk through another door, suddenly there's a door in the ceiling. You walk through another door, there's desks and tables all over the place. This is fear. This is what I remember. This section is done particularly well, but it's gone as soon as it shows up. It also has a bit of a new enemy that you already saw by Chen dying. These are shades hiding in black holes in the ground but you can just shoot the ground and kill them and not worry about it. I actually don't mind these enemies. They're fine. They play on the shades in ways that we haven't seen before, and I like that. They're a little jump scary depending on where you place them, but they're also something that can actually do damage to you so I can forgive it. Plus, you already have the psychological aspect of seeing Chen die from that exact enemy. You know what happens if you let them kill you. I think that's all I have to say about Perseus Mandate's campaign. It's all over the place, good and bad, but mostly bad. However, once you beat the campaign, you unlock three bonus missions. Funny enough, these bonus missions are a lot more polished than the main campaign, and I found them a lot more fun. Albeit, they're very short. These bonus missions are just short combat missions, but they have their own little gimmick that makes them quite enjoyable. The first one doesn't have that gimmick, it's just sort of a combat experience. Get to the end, and there you go. It's about five minutes long. The thing is, you can't save during these missions, so you have to do it all in one go, so it makes them a good challenge. As I said, the first mission plays just like Fear does, you get medkits and better weapons as you go along, and once you reach the end, it fades to black. Congratulations, you did it! The second one is where we start seeing gimmicks. This is basically a horde mode. It's a very scripted horde mode that plays out the same way every single time, but Fear's AI is so good that this can be quite enjoyable. And like I said, you can't quick save, so you have to do this all at once. What makes this amusing to think about is that this was 2007. Horde modes weren't very common yet. I mean, to give you an idea, it wouldn't be till another year until Call of Duty Zombies officially hit the market. I know zombies didn't create horde modes or anything, but that's kind of where it exploded. Also, pro tip, killing floor is a million times better than zombies ever will be, and zombies is really boring. There's my hot take for the day. Anyway, the third and final bonus mission is my favorite, and this is titled Sprint. The opening section reminds me of The Matrix a lot, but the point of this one is just a bunch of different connected combat zones and you need to get to the end. It's designed in a way that actually makes it play pretty fast paced, even for fear. The second gimmick for this one is that you get no medkits throughout the entire mission. That may sound like it would be way too difficult, however, at the end of every single combat encounter, they give you a health booster and reflex booster. So not only do you get all your health back, but you get plus five on top of that. It changes things up quite a bit when you can't just use med kits and build yourself out in the middle of combat. I really found this one fun. But altogether, these bonus missions are only gonna give you like 15 minutes of more content. And I think it says a lot when the bonus missions are better than Perseus Mandate's campaign. So how bad is Perseus Mandate? Well, it's quite easily the worst thing attached to the original fear. It's 
pretty unenjoyable. Someone asked me while I was streaming if I'd rather play Perseus Mandate or Fear 2, and I really had to stop and think about it. I don't know. If Fear 2 Reborn was in there, I'd definitely rather play Fear 2 Reborn. There's just a stark contrast between Extraction Point and Perseus Mandate. Extraction Point was obviously made with a lot of passion. Perseus Mandate was made with business in mind. It was for the money and nothing else. It felt like they cut corners and it was very unpolished. I think that's all I have to say about Perseus Mandate. I want to give a big thanks to people that joined me over on Twitch. My Twitch is twitch.tv slash jarek 4 gamingdragon If you subscribe over on Twitch, you get to see my videos ahead of time. Of course, a big thanks goes to the sponsor of this video, Hunting Clash. If you want to check that out and download it yourself, check the link down below in the video information. It is free for both iOS and Android. And of course, I would like to thank all of you guys for watching this video. I'll see you next time.